I'm Kimberly Leibowitz, and I'm here again at University Cancer Blood Center, also known as UCBC, and we are here for our Educational Cancer 101 series. And today we are marking history. For the first time, not only do we have the wonderful Dr. Aaron Chang, physician with us from UCBC, but we also have Dr. Christian Barnes from ENT of Athens. And today we're going to do, dive a little deeper into head and neck cancer. So when we're discussing head and neck cancer, Dr. Barnes, who does that include? What does head and neck cancer patient mean? Sure, it can mean a lot of different things, including skin cancer, thyroid cancers, lymphomas of the head and neck, but most generally we're talking about squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. That's far and away what we're, we're seeing the most. Um, that can affect not just the skin, but the lining of the inside of the body too, including within the mouth, within the throat, down to the vocal cords. Um, and that's really where we're seeing it a lot. And say a patient is with you and they've been diagnosed with a head or neck cancer, what does that referral process look like and how do you and Dr. Chang work together for the patient? Sure. Taking care of these head and neck cancer patients um, generally means one, two, or even all three different modalities, including surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. So depending on what we see, once we have the diagnosis, which typically goes after a biopsy, we get imaging and then we put all that information together when chemotherapy and radiation are gonna be an important part of that patient's treatment, that's when we refer over to UCBC to have the medical oncologist and the radiation oncologist see those patients as well. So from our office standpoint, we accumulate the information from pathology, from radiology, from our notes, send that over to you guys. And oftentimes for those complex patients, it's a phone call as well. Um, even sometimes when we need to bring in additional providers, we'll include that as part of the general oncology tumor board that we hold um, each week, in which case we'll bring in the radiation oncologist, medical oncologist, the surgeons such as myself, other surgeons as well, radiologists and pathologists, all so that we can go together, talk about cases one at a time to go through and make sure that we're, we have the right plan, the right treatment modalities for them. Yeah, absolutely. And that is a very, very complex process and something that we have down to a science and we have things scheduled in such a way where we're meeting every single week to discuss patients and it's built into uh, everyone's schedule that we need to make a priority to show up to these tumor board conferences so we can have these multidisciplinary discussions. Sounds like it's a real team approach between the two of y'all that you're looking at the patient very closely, very hands-on. Yes, absolutely. And it's very, this is the most difficult time for the patient because for them, they feel like nothing is going on but just be, I just want you to know that it's like a duck, you know, uh, under the water, the, the feet is churning, okay? And we are, we are working hard. So let's talk a little bit about a patient has been referred to UCBC, but how is the follow-up care? How do you all have conversation once the patient's already in treatment? Sure, so after head and neck cancer is treated, they still need to be followed up for generally at least five years because there's a high risk of recurrence in that time, depending on what the cancer is. So. At first, we're seeing the patients every month or two months, and then that can extend every six months as time goes by. But again, that's a collaborative effort where sometimes they see me, sometimes they see a medical oncologist or a radiation oncologist, um, depending on what and where the cancer is, so that, I, that we can lay eyes on the vocal cords with flexible laryngoscopy. We can get PET scans routinely to monitor them as we're going along. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, during the follow-up period after treatment, it, it, it sometimes seems that maybe it's not as important because we're not doing the radiation and the chemotherapy, but it's actually a, a critical time. It's, it's really where the patient has put in all the, the groundwork and, 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 and made all the hard choices and went through treatment, and now we're going to see if that's going to um, be successful or not. And the way that a cancer recurs, it takes time because oftentimes what is left is microscopic disease, disease that is uh, invisible to the naked eye on scopes, invisible to scanners, and invisible to labs. And we just have to give it time and see at six months, at one year, at two years, at three years, did that seed of disease in, in you? Did that grow or are you truly disease free? And that is a, a very difficult thing and, and, and something that we have to it's a team-based approach where you know we have the medical oncologist, ENT, and, 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 and the patient, family members, and everyone together to really kind of go through this journey. 
Well, you hear it here first with Cancer 101 educational series of how important it is to have wonderful physicians like Dr. Barnes and Dr. Chang that are working together to help a patient that is going through cancer treatment. I just wanted to thank you both for being here today and for sharing this information. Um, and please be sure to check out our social media channels as well as UCBC's website for more information. Thank you again. Take care.